This is a one-stop shop video for eye stent implant. Eye stent is a small stent, microscopic stent manufactured by Glaucos. Usually starts by removing of the cataract because cataract removal will actually help us to give a deeper interior chamber. While making incisions for cataract, we have to be sure that we don't do very limbal incisions because any amount of oozing of blood can cause uh, impairment of vision. Also ensuring a good amount of uh, corneal clarity because any amount of corneal haze will also impede our visualization of the trabecular meshwa. Once the cataract has been removed, we ensure that we implant the IOL and after IOL implantation, we use the cohesive viscoelastic. Now it is always recommended to use a cohesive viscoelastic while performing the eye stand by Glaucos because it gives a stability to the chamber, it does not leak and also gives us a very good visualization of the angle and the tabular mesh. We have instilled viscoelastic in this eye and slight amount of pilocarpine. Pilocarpine or any kind of myotic is used to make sure that the angles are wide open and also gives us a good visibility of the tabular mesh rock. Now these are the dimensions of the microscopic amazing technology eye stand. Here we will demonstrate in a dummy eye how it is done. We put some viscoelastic on the cornea after filling the interior chamber. Then the prism lens which is given and provided by the company is used onto the cornea. The patient's head is tilted by 45 degrees looking away from you. The injector is injected inside the eye and under visualization the plunger is used to create a dimple in the in the trabecular meshwork and then the button for pushing the eye stent implant is pushed. Now here you will see in the dummy eye that you go absolutely in a straight line without any tilt or causing any bias or bending of the injector plunger. Now you will see that these are three stents which have been implanted in the dummy eye trabecular meshwork. There is a particular technique of how to hold the injector. First of all, the injector is held between the middle finger and the thumb of your dominant hand. Make sure that the pressure of the holding is on the thumb and the middle finger while your forefinger is very soft and it should be free to push both the retractor and the firing button. You should have the index finger free and the force exerted by the index finger has to be less otherwise it will cause bending down of the injector plunger. The way we position the eye in this case is we tilt the patient 45 degrees away from the surgeon and also tilt your operating microscope. So the approximate angle between the observer and the angle <coughs> is 90 degrees. Only then you will be able to see the trabecular meshwork, scleral Schlem's canal and the ciliary body. Now in the case the patient positioning is not good, you will have problems in visualization and you will end up making a mistake. Now here we have instilled viscoelastic in the interior chamber, cohesive viscoelastic and after that the cornea is coated with another layer of viscoelastic and then the prism lens is placed onto the cornea. Here you will see we have made a mistake. There is a slight amount of ooze from the wound still coming in but luckily for us it is not impeding our field of view. In case you have an ooze, make sure that you wash away that blood ooze. Now you see how the injector plunger goes inside the eye in straight visualization and in straight angle it approaches the trabecular meshwork after the visualization of trabecular meshwork the retractor is pulled back which unsheathes the firing pin the direction of the insertion of the plunger has to be absolutely straight to the area where you want to inject the stent if there is a play between the area of injection and the angle of entry it may cause a bias and cause misfiring or half embedding of the eye stent. In case you want to place the second stent on another area, you need to change your orientation of head and seating position. Now you will see that uh, we are ready 
and we have identified the trapecular meshwork. Mean still, the viscoelastic, make sure all the air bubbles inside the eye anterior chamber are gone. Under clear visualization, sometimes trying to insert the injector plunger, we may need to refocus or zoom out. Now, once we identified our entry point of the wound, we go absolutely straight inside the eye without dipping the wound so as to avoid leakage of the viscoelastic. Now, we go inside, we pull the retractor and which exposes the firing pin. We engage the firing pin into the trabecular meshwork, create a dimple and push the black button of the firing pin. There you are. You've seen that the stent has been injected, but the injection of the stent is not exactly in the area that we desired in the trabecular meshwork. In fact, it's a bit more anterior implant where it may not work properly. So for the moment, we have planned to remove this stent and put in a new one. But meanwhile, we decide to put the second stent first. And once that has gone into the proper desired place, we would plan to explant this and reintroduce that. Now, this will be very interesting to see how a misplaced or a malplaced stent can be removed, rethreaded, and reintroduced. Now you will see that for the second stent again, in order to remove the angle bias and make sure that we enter straight inside, we have changed the position of the microscope and the position of the surgeon. We again enter inside, we retract and expose the firing pin, embed the firing pin into the trabecular meshwork and push the black button after creating a dimple. And bang, this is the perfect insertion of the stent. This is how it has happened. It has gone exactly in the desired position. Just review it again. And as we come out, a gush of blood from the lumen of the stent shows that we have gone through the trabecular meshwork and that oozing of the blood is a positive sign. Now, our one stent is placed in the exact position where we desired, whereas the earlier stent, the first stent, is slightly anteriorly placed. Now, we will demonstrate how to remove a malplaced stent. You go in with a micro forceps, pull out the stent, Rethread it and implant it again. So, we use the vitroretinal ILM peeling forceps here to retrieve this misplaced stent. Here you will see we go in, hold the stent, and very carefully pull it in one go. Sometimes this can be tricky, you may lose this stent in the interior chamber, which can be at times difficult to retrieve. Now, this stent after removal has to be placed on viscoelastic, otherwise it's such a microscopic small thing that it can just be lost. So, I put it into viscoelastic and I've retracted my covering of the injector syringe and that firing pin is threaded back into the 80 microns thin hole of the eye stent and after doing so we have retracted the uh, covering and this makes sure that the stent is reloaded back in the firing position. Now we inject some viscoelastic to empty out the oozing blood. Once this oozing blood has been cleaned, we again the coat the cornea with viscoelastic. And now proceed to reinsert the second stent. Again, we place the angulated prism. What is false pass? False pass is the angle of entry of your injector piston at times can be tilted, which can result in locking or incomplete release of the stent and cause a wrong loading in the trabecular meshra. Now, this is how a false pass can happen. Once you insert it, you suddenly tilted your trocker 
This causes the stent to come and get stuck up within the lumen of the trocar and can cause misfiring or misplacement of the stent. So you always have to make sure that the line of entry is in straight line to the line of implantation. Any amount of tilt on either direction will cause a bias and cause incomplete penetration of the stent. Now when you need to shift to a newer place or the second place, you need to make sure that the creation of the dimple is in the new place and you also shift your head along with the microscope. It's a bad idea only to rotate your hand and the injector. This will lead to a bias and cause malpositioning or incomplete injection of the stent. Here now the removal of the false or earlier wrongly placed eye stent is now being reloaded and implanted again in the eye. The second stent as we remember had gone in the perfect desired place. The first stent which was removed and reloaded is now being implanted. We again go straight in the area of trabecular meshwork, create a small dimple, retract the trocar and push the firing button and there you can see. The second stent has gone straight into the trabecular meshwork and that gush of blood is an end sign that the stent has gone into the desired place. This is a very very meticulous surgery. You need steady hands to do that and also the positioning of the patient is very very vital in this particular surgery. Any wrong positioning of the patient's head or the surgeon's hand can cause misfiring or wrong positioning of the stent. After the stent has been implanted, we do a very gentle removal of viscoelastic and also trying to clear as much amount of blood as we can because any amount of clots in that area can cause some kind of occlusion of the stent. Once that is done, we make sure that the wound is tight and sealed and then the positioning of the stent can be checked on gonioscope after a couple of weeks of surgery. I hope this video was helpful. Any more queries on this are welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video. Happy stenting. Thank you.